I'm humbled by your friendship, uh, and I'm lifted up by your model, and I think we all are. And I'm so, so glad and so proud as a Democrat to count you as a fellow Democrat, to count Jim McGovern and the Congressman and the Mayor, and especially all of you, especially the folks who work in campaigns. The, the, the young Democrats of uh, Smith, where'd they go anyway? <laughs> and from UMass, the folks who, uh, who get involved in every single election cycle and the folks who've never been involved until right now. Because this, as Don said, is not about this moment, it's not about the party, and it's not about the candidates. It's about us. It's about whether this is really ultimately going to be a community where we understand the stake that we have in our neighbors' dreams and struggles as well as our own, right? As well as our own. Let me tell you something I have learned in the experience of being governor. I suspected this beforehand because to me the dynamic in the Commonwealth, the political dynamic is not so Democrat and Republican the way it is in Washington. It's insiders and outsiders. The political establishment is pretty tight. It's hard to break into. A lot of you here helped me break into it because we ran at the grassroots. We sort of cut the line. <laughs> Those insiders, a lot of them are really good people. I work with them. But here's the truth. They don't care who the governor is. <laughs> They know who to get, how to get their phone call returned and get a meeting with the governor, no matter who the governor is. They don't care. They have the money and the influence and the connections to assure their interests up on Beacon Hill. Everybody else depends on whether the governor sees it. Everybody. It depends who the governor is, whether you see poor people, not as statistics, but as human beings who are striving to make a better life for themselves. Thank it you. depends. It depends who the governor is, whether the governor sees Western Massachusetts. You know what I'm talking about? And not just sees it at times of elections, when your votes are asked for, but when you need help with the schools, or with broadband, or help dealing with energy issues, or investing in the infrastructure that has been starved for decades. Why? Why? Because of a funding plan for the big dig developed and then hidden in a drawer by the Republican candidate for governor. Yep. Who the governor is depends and seeing all of the Commonwealth depends on who the governor is. Martha Coakley sees you. She sees you. She sees those of you in our public colleges and universities who are worried about tuition and fees going up as fast as they had been. She sees folks out here who were worried about getting high-speed internet right to your door, not because it's a luxury, but because it's impossible to be a part of the global economy anymore without it. She sees that we need the I-91 overpass or underpass or whatever the heck that thing is in downtown Springfield, which will collapse without government intervention and investment and choke off an economic lifeline for this part of the Commonwealth, the Pioneer Valley in particular. She sees that. That's what she's talking about when she talks about a half a billion dollars or more in targeted regional economic investment. We have to be about governing for all of the people of the Commonwealth, every corner of the Commonwealth. And that is an attitude you bring because you see all the people of the Commonwealth and every corner of the Commonwealth, and Mark the Coakley does. That's the first lesson and the first reason, if you needed one, why you have to work for this election. And here's the second, a very personal one. A few um, months ago, we in Massachusetts, like many states, were asked by the federal government to shelter those poor children who were stranded at our southern border on a temporary basis 
And um, on our behalf, I offered to make Massachusetts that temporary refuge, and I'm proud of that. Yes. It, was, um, it was not in every corner a popular decision. <laughs> it wasn't an easy uh, decision in some respects, particularly if you think about these things in political ways. But it was the right thing to do because the question for me, and I think for some of you, was one of patriotism and faith. The character of the country and the teachings I learned in the church I grew up in about what you do when there is another human soul suffering. A few weeks ago in August, I had a quiet weekend morning and a long to-do list from my wife, Diane. <laughs> and uh, it required a few things from the local Home Depot. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna slip out <laughs> and run these errands and I'm not gonna call the state police. They don't like it when I, when I do that. In fact, they're scowling at me right now. <laughs> but I thought, this is easy, I'll be in and out. It was early, it was opening time. And so I went out in my, in my t-shirt and jeans and flip-flops and I had on a cap and dark glasses. I thought, this is all right. <laughs> and I got there just after opening, and I got outed by the manager in the first aisle I was in. <laughs> he said, Governor, I'm so glad you're here. It's nice to see you. I had seven encounters in the Home Depot. Seven encounters. One was with a gentleman in a checkout line who was angry about my decision. Not rude, but loud and angry. And he said, Governor, this is wrong. My, my own wife is an immigrant. She came here legally. That's how people should come here. And I just want you to know I, I disagree, and I disagree strenuously. And I said, thank you for your feedback. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, let me get out of this. <laughs> <laughs> I had six other encounters in the home people, all on the same subject. And to a person, they whispered to me, we're with you. You're doing the right thing. The calls and messages to the office were three to four to one in favor of offering temporary refuge to those children. What's the matter with that picture? The hater yelled and got all of the noise, got all of the attention, and the six people who had justice and compassion in their hearts whispered it. It's time for justice to shout, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for us to raise our voice in favor of compassion. We can't keep talking about how important it is to raise good and kind people as children and in our schools and not bring goodness and kindness into our policy. And if you don't think that is at risk, or in question in this and every election. Let me tell you, as Don so eloquently did, that is exactly what is at stake. Yes, it is about specific policies. Yes, it is about universal pre-K. Yes, it is about how we spread prosperity around to everybody and give everyone a chance to imagine a different path for themselves and then to reach for it. Yes, there are specific things government has to do alongside the private sector, alongside the not-for-profits, not for alongside individual citizens to make a better life. But it all comes down to whether you actually believe that the American dream has currency right now and that social and economic justice is the reason America was founded in the first place and is an exception in the world. And I say, if you believe in that, you have to vote for Martha Coakley and every other candidate on the Democratic side in this election. And more to the point of right now, you've got to do the work. We all have to do the work. I'm glad you're here. This is not where the action is. Where the action is, is on those lists, on those clipboards, and what you sign up to do, and what you get everybody you know to do. It's about whether you are going to make time in your very busy day to come and vote. And if you don't think you can on your very busy day, 
whether you're going to make time to get an absentee ballot and vote in advance, and whether you're going to get your neighbors and your friends and your family members and engage with them before the election and talk to that cranky uncle every one of us has where you know you're not supposed to talk about politics because it's not going to go well. But why not? Because we're not looking to elect a governor or a lieutenant governor or attorney general for Democrats. We're looking to elect a governor, a lieutenant governor, an attorney general, and other office holders for all of us and for the future. So we have to do the work. And that is what I'm here to ask you to do. Yes, to vote for Martha and the other Democratic candidates, but to pour your time and your heart and your effort into assuring that every other vote that is out there is captured and brought to the polls. Because this is not, as I say, about the party or even about the candidates. It's about our common future and our common destiny. So let's go get this done.